Chapter 18 Intimacy Gideon took in his surroundings like a stranger. He kept his distance from sharp corners and felt an instinctive unease going through long hallways. Even though he had walked this route thousands of times before, it always seemed unfamiliar. He didn't know if it was because of an unwillingness to accept them as home or something else. He looked down at the wound in his hand again. The cut had healed, but it still had a way of drawing his curiosity. He let a long moment pass before his attention was drawn by footsteps nearby. Their haste and gait was unmistakable. He slowly turned around, giving her time to reach him. He took in a slow breath and prepared his mind for whatever she had to say to him. Her footsteps slowed until they were a stone's throw apart. He was surprised when she didn't have anything to say. Hi, Gideon attempted, regretting the decision immediately. Hi? Hi? You leave us alone for months and that's all you have to say? You say that to me after you... Her tone quieted. You... Are you... All right? It was Gideon's turn to remain quiet. Uh, Daniel was always better at this, Havalaya groaned. We've just... I've missed you. Gideon's visor remained impassive, but he was still acknowledging her. Our team needs a leader. I need my friend. Gideon remained still. Havilai let out a short breath. Could you do me a favor? His head turned closer her direction. Could you look me in the eyes again? His eyes widened beyond her sight. His shoulder movement told her enough, so she continued. The first time I saw you, it showed me a weakness I was ignoring. I need to know where else I need to grow. Gideon moved like a puppy called by his owner. Sure. His eagerness amused her, and she moved her hair out of the way of her eyes to meet his own. A timid shift in his irises eventually settled on meeting her gaze. Her eyes widened for a moment until he blinked. She tried to gain her bearing and looked away trembling. The color drained from her face and her breathing became shallow. Thank you, Gideon. He caught her before her body hit the ground. Havilai woke up slowly and once again found herself alone. It was surprising how often one with her semblance found herself here. She examined the equipment around her until finally seeing Gideon sitting in the room with her. She smiled at that. He responded to the slow breath of her reaction, and it broke her heart to see he still wasn't sleeping. Are you okay? he asked hurriedly. She waved him away. Don't lock yourself up again, I'm fine. She took in a breath and sat up. With a brief series of stretches and making sure there wasn't anything hooked up to her, she jumped off the bed and gathered her borrowed robe. Gideon looked back at the table and then to her. Are you sure you should... She cut him off. I knew what I was getting into when I asked. You showed me another one of my weaknesses. Her eyes narrowed towards him. I wanted to get it into the light and confront it. He briefly blinked and decided her intensity spoke for itself. This is how he would be a benefit to her. That was where he was welcome. I'd like to go to the gym. Gideon glanced over at the clock and drew her attention. She rolled her eyes and started walking anyway. The shadow of the earth rose, allowing just enough light to make out the edges of their now-developing city. The shine of the oasis glinted off of her eyes and once again made her smile. Gideon eventually caught up and joined her. They remained quiet until opening the doors to the room. Thank you for humoring me here, she noted candidly. Gideon shrugged. I just want to... She cut him off again. I know. Her new weapons drew his eyes. Large braces wrapped around her biceps and forearms with spools of cables wrapped taut around each. A knife protruded from them, and upon further examination, he saw room for dust crystals that she began loading. He simply checked his armor straps that he had become accustomed to wearing in his sleep. A quick roll of his shoulders, and he made his way to the center of the room. Havilai continued to prep her gear, and for the first time, he allowed himself to see what his dear friend had become. Where any man couldn't be blamed to admire her physique of pure muscle and bony features, or the more superficial would be drawn to her fondest traits, 
he found himself drawn to her eyes. They were intense, and for the first time in his life, she had invited direct contact with his own. It had, in ways he couldn't explain, invigorated him. For as long as he could remember, Gideon had only terrified or destroyed those who met his gaze. This isolation cut him off from all human interaction. That is, until he met her. They were both ready to kill Grimm in both new worlds without family or shelter. Yet until that moment, he never found any hope of a life worth living until he saw her. She didn't run, and that meant something to him. Now she invited him, and even found him, a source of strength. A moment passed where he thought she was just using him like a piece of psychological exercise equipment, but it found little purchase when he noticed that she had given him something in return. Her personality was relentless. She never stopped pushing herself. In the times he actually could look at people through pictures, he admired those who not only had talent, but worked hard to develop and perfect it. The instructor was indeed a helpful guide, but it was always her that got us all out of bed in the morning. He appreciated the purpose she gave all of them, and now realized she had given him a little more. He finally turned and met his gaze. A brief rush of adrenaline surged through the back of Gideon's head when he sensed his semblance picking up malice from her. He reflexively turned away and started breathing quickly to calm himself down. She yelled at him despite the room being empty. Hey, trust me. I want to practice with you, and I can't push myself if you hold back. Behind his visor, his eyes searched for a response as if the answer would appear on a poster nearby. Her footsteps echoed as she approached him and rested her head on his shoulder. Gideon, she whispered, I trust you. He let out a long breath and drew himself up. She arched her head back trying to meet his eyes, but they still hadn't met. He looked down and she saw through the narrow lens that his focus was entirely on her weapons rather than her face. Let's take our time. First, I need to see where you are. She pouted and slowly turned around. Her tail wagged broadly and her posture held a certain swagger to it. He laughed and prepared himself. It was then that he realized why she challenged him so directly. Her blades came at him like a flurry, a swarm of lancers was the only thing that came to mind, and he recalled the training to approach that kind of enemy. Left followed right, and right followed left. Her athleticism had risen from a hobby to a mastery as she contorted herself in reaction to every possible opening he presented to her. He eventually gained his footing and kept the center of his blade pointed towards her face. His restraint was costing him, however, as he was forced to only watch her weapons and feet. There was a strength behind every blow that he realized was the result of the braces. She had accommodated for every weakness, even if it was merely a gap in their physiology. His reach brought him some time, but her movements gave him no respite. He rushed out with the broad end of his blade, and she threw herself over it in a somersault that included a gratuitous kick to the face. It was light, but the message had been delivered. She didn't speak, merely roared in effort as she pressed her assault. Muscles tensed as she carved and chipped the edge of his sword that met her thrusts and hacks that merely requested her shoulders to move. He tested a counter to make sure her bones wouldn't break by meeting her forearm as she rushed behind him and rolled over his back. It sent her airborne for a moment, but she rolled with it and landed properly. He nodded as she assumed another stance that would have been impossible if he had dislocated her elbow. Her aura hadn't flickered yet, nor his own. She was fast. He'd give her that. Death by a thousand cuts was her approach, and if it weren't for his own training, he wouldn't have lasted a minute against her. He was shocked when he realized their exchange hadn't even measured that length of time. He was winded, and yet found air to laugh. Waving at her, she let her blades fall to her sides and straightened her stance. So? she asked without a hint of fatigue. Think you can take me seriously now? Gideon took a few more breaths before responding. I'm... I'm just glad you didn't get hurt this time. Havelia cocked her head slightly. Do you think this is payback or something? Her sports bra borrowed from the nearby locker exposed the scar he had left her, and she merely pounded it with her fist. This was my mistake. I... It was his turn to cut her off this time. Want to learn from it. She nodded with that familiar look he enjoyed seeing from her. 
She was happy he wasn't blaming himself for it anymore, at least not openly. This hopefully would keep them both busy given the long day they had awaiting them. Ready for round two? She asked impatiently. He let out one more breath and finally met her eyes. Just make sure your mind doesn't get too aggressive. The moment you get in a tough place, calm down and I'll join you. She readied herself and he took in one last breath before locking eyes with her. The last words he remembered before slipping away were as close to a mother's song before bed he ever knew. I trust you.